Welcome everyone to the HT Story Channel. You follow the new or exciting love story series titled Reborn to Revenge. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Chapter 6. I was foolish. When Jocelyn woke up, her eyes were still tearful. She looked around and then stopped on the alarm clock finally. It was almost 10 o'clock. She slept so long. Jocelyn picked out a simple household dress from the wardrobe and covered the pinch scar that was made on her neck yesterday with her collar, then she went downstairs, praying in her heart that she would never see the disabled young master. But sure enough, Arthur was not downstairs, so was Nicola. The living room was very lively. Selena was teaching Julia who is second daughter of the Morrison family to make dumplings. Arthur's father was sitting on the sofa with glasses and watching the finance and economics channel. She went up and said hello, mum. Seeing her, Selena's face turned cold and her eyes stared at the quartz clock tightly. Look at the time. So lazy on your first day after coming back, do you really regard yourself as a daughter of rich family to enjoy wealth and honor here? Julia said lazily with making dumplings, maybe it's too hard in prison. My eldest sister-in-law was so tired that forgot to cook breakfast. Did she always cook breakfast? So Jocelyn's status in this family were daughter-in-law and nanny. What's wrong? Eldest sister-in-law, have you been fooled in prison? Seeing her silent for a long time, Julia raised her slender eyebrows and continued satirizing. Jocelyn regained her mind and said with a slight smile, no problem, LF Julia wants to eat the breakfast cooked by me, I'll do it now to make sure it suits your appetite. She pretended not to see Julia's changed face with Selena and walked calmly to the kitchen. What? Psycho. It's almost noon, who wants to eat the breakfast cooked by her? Julia abused secretly. When Jocelyn was bullied by her before, she always showed the aggrieved look of being bullied. Now she was better, could she smile at her calmly? I guess her became foolish when she was in prison. Selena took the dumplings in her hand, you see how terrible you made them. You should do like this. In the kitchen, facing a room of oil, salt, sauce, vinegar and vegetables, Jocelyn had a headache. She couldn't cook breakfast, it used to be good if she didn't burn the kitchen when she was at the Leonard family before but she still cooked it reluctantly. She took the steak from the refrigerator, put chopped green onion and eggs in the frying pan and fried them. She remembered that the nanny of the Leonard family used to cook breakfast by this way. It was just that the fire was not well controlled. When she picked up the steak, it was as black as chard. No way. She secretly sprinkled a layer of white flour to cover up and put some cumin and paprika, then took it out. Julia just took only one bite and her delicate face changed rapidly. B.A.H. She looked very unbearable, this was really the most unpalatable food she has ever eaten. She vomited out the steak she had eaten, the chopsticks were crashed on the table with a crack, eldest sister-in-law, are you on purpose? Are you trying to harm me by misplacing something in my food, just as you did in the crime of manslaughter? so bad. Selena's face was full of suspicion, she remembered that she could cook well. She didn't believe it very much. She took up the knife and fork to cut a little of steak. She had just put it in her mouth and her face changed from blue to purple immediately. Ha ha. Doesn't it taste good? I'm sorry. When I was in prison, not only did I get a head injury, the wound on my head was stitched, I also got my fingers broken. So maybe my hands shock so that put too much seasoning in it just now. Her face was full of sincerity so that made people unable to find any mistakes. Even if Julia was extremely angry, she also had cozy smile on the corners of the mouth. Selena's eyes moved away slightly. I think you are on purpose. Don't cook if you don't want to. Who do you sour? Julia had never got used to Jocelyn's submissive Lou. How can such a person deserve her brother Arthur? Therefore, it had more than an unkind meaning in her words, because she vowed to drive Jocelyn out of the Morrison family sooner or later. 
Julia, what you said is not right. I wanted to cook it deliciously, but I'm really. Jocelyn showed her grievances thoroughly. You. A farce in the living room was on the verge, at this time. Chapter 7. She happened to see an embracing scene. Is it enough? If you say enough, just shut up. My ears are going be deaf. Can't you leave me quiet to watch the news? The oldest man in Morrison family, who was sitting alone on the sofa, suddenly scolded, with his crutches knocked twice. Selena glowered at Julia, and Julia immediately stopped talking. Okay, Grandpa. The oldest man, Abner Morrison, had only one son, Jeff Morrison, who was Selena's husband and Arthur's father. He flew to France a month ago to go on business, so Abner was now in charge of the family. Being an old cadre in the military region, Abner still possessed the character of an old soldier. On the financial channel, the news was on live, the financial magnate of Leonard had been taken over by Stanjard, and the death of the Leonard was just a traffic accident. And their daughter Joanne Leonard was also in the death list. Jocelyn stared at the screen with her eyes unmoved, her eyes gradually moistened and her fists tightened. At this time, on the second floor of the villa, the man in the wheelchair looked coldly at everything that happened in the living room, his eyes frowned. Jocelyn was indeed different from before. Throughout the day, Jocelyn did not see Arthur appear. This man was like a ghost, nobody knowing what he was doing and thinking. In the middle of the night, a jingle sound came from the bedroom next door to her, and there was a fierce voice, accompanied it seemed being a movement of the wheelchair. This awoke Jocelyn, who was always in a light sleep. She grabbed her hair hard. She meant to not get up, but the sound was too loud, even if she wrapped her head in the bedding, she could still hear it. Finally, she had to put on her slippers and go to the next door. She knocked a few times, but no one answered. Something wrong. She was soberly awake. Jocelyn directly pushed the door in, but suddenly stopped her foot and stared at the scene in front of her. Arthur was falling down thing wrong. She was soberly awake. Jocelyn directly pushed the door in, but suddenly stopped her foot and stared at the scene in front of her. Arthur was falling down the bed. The black underpants had been torn apart, the thighs bare, the key parts blocked by quilt. Next to him was a sexy young woman wearing a camisole and saying in a terrified voice, Master, I am sorry, I didn't mean it. If you don't like me, I won't come. I, do I bother you? Jocelyn said while her legs didn't mean to move. Arthur's face was almost dark to the extreme, especially at this moment, there was a person outside the door that he couldn't ignore. Get out. Okay. Okay, I am leaving. The young woman didn't even have time to wear her clothes. She turned down her head and hurriedly passed Jocelyn's side. When she left, she whispered her, mistress. Her mouth was pumping, she couldn't figure out what happened. Does this woman? While she was thinking in her heart, a sharp sight swept over her. Is it enough? Arthur's face was as cold as a cold pool. Yeah. Enough. Jocelyn answered subconsciously. Subconsciously. Get out? He shouted. Oh. Except for those words, does he have anything else to say? Jocelyn was about to close the door and go. Wait. Behind her came Arthur's dark and low voice. Chapter 8. Serve me with bath. Give me a hand. She even thought that he was so capable that could stand up by himself. Jocelyn tangled for a moment and went honestly over to help him up from the ground. It was also at this time that she discovered that Arthur was really tall. When he was sitting in a wheelchair, he couldn't be seen to be so tall. Now, this man of 1.85 meters was pressing against her, it was very heavy for her. She held him to sit back in the wheelchair with gasping. If nothing else, I'll go back to sleep. She yawned and was really sleepy, she had been having nightmares these days. 
She said that unthinkingly, her words made Arthur frown quickly, he frowned so tight that the eyebrows could screw a fly to death. It's late. I want to take a bath. He said almost in a commanding tone, his voice cooled several degrees again. Jocelyn's step stopped in time. Take a bath? She felt very confused. What he meant, was it that let her take a bath for him, wasn't it? Was she so unlucky? The beautiful young woman wanted to help him just now, but he refused. Now she had encountered such an errand as soon as she came in. Yes. Arthur had no patience left, sliding his wheelchair in the direction of the bathroom, come over. It was the commanding tone again. Ah, could she refuse? Why did he take a bath in the middle of the night? But it seemed that it was not very good to leave the disabled master along here. After all, he was a disabled person. Forget it, she accepted her fate. It took Jocelyn a long time to move her feet. It was really the first time she served someone with bath. When she was the princess of the Leonard family before, she was served by the servants and nurses. She filled the bathtub with water in the same way as before. Arthur sat in a wheelchair and stared at her with a fixed gaze. Under the faint light of LED hanging on the wall, Jocelyn's face was delicate and small. When she bent down, she exposed a large area of clavicle. She put her hand in the bathtub and tried the temperature again to adjust the water temperature well. It is okay, come to wash. She turned back and said that inadvertently. But after saying that, she would like to bite her tongue. He was a disabled person, it was necessary for her to undress him, right? Sure enough, Arthur's face turned instantly black. The atmosphere in the bathroom suddenly became suffocating. Jocelyn looked at him and pointed to herself, that clothes can help you take off them. Arthur did not answer her question, he just stared at her tightly. She was very frightened because of his stare. Okay, he won. She held him up again, she looked laborious so that her was shaking and couldn't stand still. Jocelyn held him in one hand, took off his coat in the other and gritted her teeth, you are too heavy. Who helped you bathe before? She continued saying, if you want me to help you take a bath later, I'll have to buy a crutch, otherwise. Suddenly, the atmosphere was like ice. Before she could say the last word, she was pushed away hard by Arthur. She staggered, stepped on the overflowing liquid and fell on Arthur who had just stepped into the bathtub. They all sank into the bathtub full of water synchronously, the water splashed everywhere. She was soaked up and down in an instant, the white shirt clung to the perfect Ferga, her rounded chest was about to come out. What made her so embarrassed was that it seemed that her hand grasped something that should not be grasped. It's just between Arthur's thighs. Chapter 9. Your trick was too clumsy. How long do you plan to lie on my body? Suddenly, Arthur's voice was passed over with the innumerous anger. What? Jocelyn thought of it, she was screaming, she only felt that her right hand was burning, and his body was changing, she felt it very clearly. At that time, she plucked her hand back immediately and propped up her body, and she got up from him. But the bathtub was too small, she followed the light, and saw the scenery in front of her, the two points on his chest. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Jocelyn, you have to calm down. Her skin was full of water, like the hibiscus that just came out of the water. The shirt was wet with water stuck to her body. Arthur can clearly see that this body was very attractive to him. Your trick is getting worse and worse. Arthur warned her coldly, and at the same time he suppressed the anger that came out of his heart. The men in the world aren't the same. Is it necessary to protect? She blurted out and debuted, no one would treasure it. What did you say? The implication was that she had seen other men's dicks. Even under the dim light, Jocelyn seemed to be able to feel Arthur's cold eyes, giving her a very strong sense of suffocation. L. Uke cold eyes, giving her a very strong sense of suffocation. L. 
You can pretend that I didn't say it. Inhale, exhale, and Jocelyn crossed the bathtub, and touched the bath towel indiscriminately. Then scrubbed the back of Arthur causally. The man's face was tense, his thin lips kept compressed, never said something. Can you still bear it? Jocelyn threw the bath towel to him, she also had the temper, you can wash yourself for the in front part of your body. Lest she be worn the, seduce, hat again. Arthur frowned. He took a bath towel and scrubbed his whole body in front of her Jocelyn's mouth was pressed, and finally she turned her head and didn't look at him. After taking a shower, Jocelyn took a bathrobe and put it on him. While kneeling down to help him tie the waist belt, she tried not to see that place, but she still couldn't help but recall the feeling when she touched it in the bathroom. Arthur stared at the face of the woman who was squatting in front of him, he suddenly remembered a wedding invitation card received in the mailbox today. There is a wedding party the day after tomorrow, you will accompany me to attend that. Although he did not want to have any relations with this woman, she was also his nominal wife. Attend the wedding party. Jocelyn's movement of tying the belt was stopped, and she looked up and saw that Mr. Disable's gloomy face, it's like others owed him millions dollars. Was this the attitude of inviting? I won't accompany you. She refused it even she didn't think about it. She tied a knot at his waist. I have no interests in the wedding party. Moreover, I have been in prison. Everyone knows it in this circle, I am too lazy to stir up in those right and wrong matters. Arthur frowned and his face was black. The previous Jocelyn never refused him so blatantly. Well, the bath is also finished, the clothes are changed, you can sleep. Putting him on the bed, Jocelyn helped him to arrange the quilt, then stretched out and took a look at watch, it was already three in the morning. I also go to rest. Good night. She was going to go back to the bedroom next door, just to take a step. Arthur, who had been lying down behind her suddenly said, Stan Judd and I have lived in a compound since childhood. He is a grandson who is recognized by the grandfather, his wedding party, Morrison family members must be present. Jocelyn's action of opening the bedroom door was stopped, and she frowned, as if she hadn't heard it clearly, who's the wedding party? Chapter 10. Sleeping in your bed. Stan Judd, lying flat, Arthur said, indifferently. Stan came over for Grandpa's birthday before while Jocelyn was in jail. You should have met him once during our wedding three years ago. Arthur wasn't so sure because he wasn't there for receiving guests in the wedding. It was so quiet in the room that even a sound of needle falling could be heard clearly. Jocelyn leaned against the golden-edged door. Her emotion was so unsteady that her body trembled slightly. Arthur was so insightful that he knew something wrong. He was about to close eyes but opened them again. With little force, his hand held his body to sit up. Jocelyn was standing ten meters away from him, making a fist so tightly that she didn't notice the nails was into flesh. Stan Judd. It was a name that printed in her heart like a hot soldering iron. What are you thinking? A cold voice came from the back. Arthur saw her grievance, sorrow and anger. Jocelyn suddenly sobered up and took back at that serious man. How fast he changed face. Nothing. She adjusted the mood, do I have to attend the wedding, can refuse. Hum. Arthur indifferently. Responded. He was tired indeed and in poor health he felt exhausted to hold his body by one hand. Thus he lied down slowly. It can be fine. Her reason reminded her that she was Jocelyn now not Joanne. If she wanted to revenge, to find out the reason of her parents' death, to take back what belonged to her, she had to rely on Morrison family, namely, Arthur Morrison. However, as the wife of the eldest master, she was unable to sleep in the main bedroom. No wonder that those servants looked down upon her. I can go, but I have a requirement. There was silence in the back. Arthur wasn't interested in her words or even was lazy to reply her. 
Jocelyn thought she was speaking to no one. It was better to act directly. I will take the silence as an agreement. Finishing her words, she quickly turned back to her small bedroom. She found something and then took the quilt and pillow to go back to Arthur's room. She directly lied down the space beside Arthur. Arthur's bed was so big that her single bed which was difficult to roll over couldn't even compare. The big bed is so comfortable. Jocelyn sighed when she lied down. Arthur's state of mind collapsed, looking angry. He almost bit his teeth while speaking, Jocelyn, where is your sense of shame? She totally didn't regard herself as an outsider and even lied down beside him so freely. Was it her requirement? For a second, he regretted the previous silence. Can shame be eaten? Besides, Mr. Morrison, we are legally married couple who shouldn't sleep separately. Sleeping together is the way it should be. What are you worried about? We can't do anything. Those words made Arthur speechless, especially the last sentence which challenged his bottom line. When did she learn to speak well after three years of prison? Indeed, he was unwilling to talk with that woman. He would die of anger sooner or later. Arthur frowned so tightly that he turned his back against Jocelyn. The night got darker and there was darkness outside the window. Only scarce moonlight.